Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share my journey of learning English as a foreigner moving abroad at 17. If you've watched my previous videos, you might have already known I moved abroad after graduating from high school. I did not go to the international high school and all my prior education, including English, was received in China. I received several comments saying my English was very good, thank you very much, in my previous video, so I thought it might be interesting to share my English learning journey with you. Today, I'm going to break down different stages of me learning English, key events that I think that push me to the next stage, what and how I have learned, as well as what I think would be helpful if I were to study English again. So without further ado, let's get started. As the name tells, this is my first time encounter English as a new language. It was during my primary school time when English was a mandatory subject, and that was when I first started to learn alphabets, basic grammars, simple conversations, and so on. I was also taught how to write English letters, and I was using those English letter practicing sheets to improve my writing memories. As the study progresses, we learned simple grammars like present simple tense, present continuous tense, etc. etc. We were encouraged to repeat after the recordings so we can practice our pronunciation through speaking as well. I think these introductory classes to get into the language was quite helpful as it kicked off a structured start of my English learning journey. Then I met my game changer number one. Towards the later stage of my beginning phase, I started to learn Longman's new concept English. It is a popular English textbook teaching British rules of English. I did not specifically choose UK between US and UK English back then. It was simply the book that my school teacher recommended and I have been taught British English at school. There are a total four volumes in this series and I finished all of them. One thing that I think really helped with my this period of study is recitation. It is something that I hadn't appreciated back then, but in the hindsight, I think it has been very beneficial for my later stage of learning. I remember I was attending English class each week and I need to recite the text or the passage learned in that week in the next week. There was a time for the recitation and if I did not meet the target, I would need to recite two essays in the next class. A bit like snowballing. <gasps> I completed my first three books like this and in the fourth book, I shifted to read through the passages instead of memorizing because I chose to focus on something else. During this time, I continued to study other aspects of the language. I started to learn more complicated grammars and started to write short essays around 300 words. In my free time, I also started to listen to Learn English from BOA. It was quite challenging understanding everything at the beginning, but slowly I was able to pick up a few words that I knew from the recordings. To date, I still remember the first essay in the first book of the new concept English was about handbag, and the first paragraph of the third book was about puma. Excuse me? I think the full collection of New Concept English has led my way through my elementary stage. Now that I've built up the fundamentals in a relatively good state, it's time to put things into context, and this is when preparing to coming abroad came into play. I needed to pass a language test before coming to the UK, so ELTS was what I have been intensively studying in the summer after graduating from high school. I won't dive into too much details in terms of how I learned ELTS in this video, but there was definitely a setup challenge where the words you knew were put into a new context that you've never met before, huh? such as industry-specific articles. That was what I found most challenging during this stage, but I also started to pick up the habit of inferring what certain words means instead of turning to the dictionaries directly. I think it was a new skill for me to pick up at the time. Looking back, studying else was like a pivot of what you have learned previously and to extend it further. I was still turning to but trying to rely less on dictionaries. Instead, I started to focus on the sense of words and implication of sentences, which had become more important than a direct dictionary translation. Then moving to the UK became my second game changer. If you're interested in why I moved to the UK in the first place, you can watch the video here. Living in the environment definitely forced me to speak the language a little bit more, and the recitation in the early stage learning has definitely made it less intimidating. I remember I had the handbag conversation going on in my head when checking out at supermarket, which I still find quite funny till today. My English has definitely improved since I first moved to the UK. My memory somehow blurred when thinking back what I have done differently during this stage. But what I do have till today is a small notebook, keeping a note of the new words and the new expressions that I learned every other day. So I think I'm definitely still learning. 
If you ask me what I would do if I want to learn English again, these are the tips. First is listening. Listen to everything. Podcasts, TV shows, reels, films, tapes, everything that speaks the language that you want to learn. It does not really matter if you can understand the language or not. It is about grabbing the sense of language, which can be subconsciously developed just through listening to them. A perfect example of me on this is I used to watch Gossip Girl again and again in my teenage years. And when I first came to the UK, obviously that TV series was in all American English. And when I first came to the UK, people here were asking if I went to school in America, which I guess listening does have some effect. Secondly is speak out. This is a callback for my reciting days. You might have found recitation or memorizing is a bit boring, but to understand it from another perspective, you repeat things many, many times in order to memorizing them. And that would reinforce your memory of speaking that word out loud and also at the same time make speaking it less intimidating, if that makes sense. Last but not the least is the use of dictionary. If you are learning a new word that you do not know, instead of turning to a dictionary that translates it into your native language, look up the definition of the new words in the target language. The explanations in the target language will provide more context and nuances of the application of the words. And in this way, you are developing a more accurate sense of how to apply the word in the real world. I used Cambridge Dictionary during this time and I found it very useful. I hope you find it interesting and helpful at the same time. I learned English the old school way where we still having a textbook and learning the grammar first before coming to the UK. My primary focus at the time was actually not for going abroad, it was actually for exam purposes rather than interactive conversations in everyday life. Different people have different goals in learning a new language and there are definitely more advanced apps that you can use nowadays. Regardless, no matter how the technology advances, I still still think listening and speaking are the irreplaceable practices you have to go through in order to be fluent in a language. So don't be afraid, trust the process, have faith in yourself, and I'm sure you will pick up the language sooner or later. Good luck and see you in the next one!